All right, well, welcome back or welcome to, or welcome back, I guess either way works. Welcome to or welcome back to the 510 Report where we talk about industry news and advocacy and general goings on. I do have a whole bunch of stuff that I wanted to talk about today and I guess we can file this under the general goings on category. Um, Last May, the FDA sent out uh, a bunch of letters to a bunch of different companies basically demanding that they stop branding the way that they're branding. These were liquid companies like uh, One Hit Wonder that had the juice box. There were other vapor companies or liquid companies doing like the it looked like Nilla wafers or it looked like Oreos I mean we've seen these all over uh, social media uh, all over the vape industry juice bottles that look like Fanta or soda or gummies or candy or cookies or things like this and this is from an article on US News and World Report and the big headline across the top says companies stop making e-cig liquid products that look like snacks and candies so basically like I said in May uh, the FDA they sent out a bunch of letters to a bunch of different liquid companies saying look you guys have to really stop doing this it's misleading it could be dangerous you could be tricking kids into thinking they're buying something that is not actually what it is sort of like truth in advertising right misleading branding and misleading or poor branding why are you who is calling me from texas right now i feel like there's just always going to be interruptions in this but anyway yes uh misleading or bad branding is something that a lot of people including myself in the vape industry have been kind of championing against for a long time i've been talking about poor branding or misleading branding in the vlog for what I feel like is years now, and the FDA finally took notice, and apparently all of these companies, at least all of the companies that they reached out to, have changed their branding, so it doesn't look like a Fanta bottle, or a Nilla wafer, or Oreos, or any other juice boxes, or any other sort of like misleading, poorly branded, I mean, there's no excuse for that and I'm honestly glad that they did it and now according to this article there is a a firm and permanent ban on misleading or poorly branded juice labels Uh, I think it's really unfortunate that the FDA had to kind of step in and stop this Uh, I'm bummed out that the vape industry couldn't self-regulate enough to know not to make a liquid bottle that looks like Oreo cookies and I get it that adults like flavors too and you know what I love Oreo cookies but I definitely don't need a juice bottle that looks like Oreo cookies. I do definitely think that overall it's kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a real irresponsible thing to do in my opinion. And this article ends with a really interesting paragraph. It says the FDA also noted that more than 2 million middle and high school students in the United States were current users of e-cigarettes and similar products in 2016. And the availability of flavored liquids is a major reason why youngsters use the devices. Now, I can't verify how accurate that actually is because they don't have any links to any actual studies done on why kids are vaping and they themselves admit they don't know why kids are vaping. They don't know why young people are attracted to things like the Juul because the Juul packaging is not appealing to kids in any way. It is the most adult branded vaping devices that I have ever seen. They say it's because of children oriented or youth oriented flavors like fruit because fruit is only only for kids and what's really interesting about that last paragraph in my opinion is the way it's presented is kind of a little bit disingenuous they are pretty accurate when they say it's two million you know uh, middle school and high school students in 2016 but what they're also not reporting is that that's down that number is now a, a lot lot lower they call it a puzzling and dramatic drop that after 2016 went from about 16 percent of high school students down to about 11% 
of high school students. Youth smoking rates and youth vaping rates are at an all-time low right now. And I have searched and searched and searched and searched and searched online for any data, any papers, any published reports, or anything at all that says the main reason why young people are getting into vaping is because of the flavors. That data I, I can't find it. I just simply can't find it. And it honestly, in my opinion, begs the question, like, what would smoking rates be like right now for middle school and high school students if vaping just did not exist? I think they're not looking at the other side of this coin. And the other side of that coin is that youth smoking rates... <laughs> Youth smoking rates are at an all-time low right now, and vaping is declining among youth right now. And I absolutely understand the FDA's concern with poorly branded, misrepresented sort of products like that. Of course, we don't want, e you know, of course we don't want e-liquid bottles that look like Oreos. Of course, we don't want e-liquid bottles that look like uh, Nilla wafers, right? But they're also kind of turning this argument of poorly branded things into a, uh, into a flavor argument in, in, you know, in favor of a flavor ban in flavor of in favor in favor of their flavor ban favor flavor favor flavor favor flavor that's difficult to say that's just something that i thought was uh very very interesting and uh i i totally understand why the fda did it i just wish that the fda didn't have to do it i kind of wish that the industry you know i wish we would have uh i wish we would have taken care of that ourselves i wish we didn't have to rely on the government to go okay you can't make e-liquid bottles that look like juice boxes okay you can't make e-bottle or you know e-liquid bottles that look like oreos with the fda stepping in like that and kind of laying down the hammer it kind of makes the whole vape industry look a little bit uh a little bit irresponsible and a little bit foolish in my opinion like this is something that we should have taken care of ourselves, I think. And I do have one uh, update from last week. Last week we talked about the Truth Initiative where I had looked online and it, I had seen that the Truth Initiative was funded by Big Tobacco. It turns out that that's not necessarily the case. I received an email from Mr. Stefan from Not Blowing Smoke and he had a little bit of uh, clarification as far as the Truth Campaign, the Truth Initiative is funded. Although their money comes from the MSA, which is a settlement with Big Tobacco. And we're going to talk about the MSA in just a little bit when we finally, finally get to talk to California or talk about California, not talk to California. But Stefan says, the Truth Initiative is not funded by Big Tobacco at all and never really was. It was started as the American Legacy Foundation through MSA funding from the states. And I think that's where myself and a lot of people get confused because the MSA, so the MSA funding isn't necessarily funded by Big Tobacco, but it's money from Big Tobacco that pays out to the states, and the states can use that money to uh, build schools or build roads. So if this freeway in your city was built using MSA money, that money did come from Big Tobacco, but you can't necessarily say that the freeway was funded by Big Tobacco. There's a real interesting distinction there when it comes to MSA money. He says, what Truth did with the initial sums of MSA money was invest in stocks and bonds, etc. They are funding themselves for the most part and have the dividends they get back from the stock market. Smart play if you have the cash to start up to actually do that. He says at present the IRS 99s for them as of last year show that they have about a billion dollars in asset value on the books. So I misspoke earlier. I was confused between paying by Big Tobacco and MSA, which is money that comes from Big Tobacco, but isn't necessarily a funded by Big Tobacco thing. So thank you, Stefan, for sending me that email and kind of clarifying what's going on with the MSA and the Truth Initiative. I always want the 510 report to be very factually accurate. And, and if I am wrong about anything that I'm saying on here, uh, I would love to be corrected and, and I will put those corrections on YouTube because facts matter. And another just quick little general goings on thing that I ran across on the internet this week, um, Mount Baker Vapor sent out this 
advertisement, which why would Mount Baker Vapor send out this advertisement? And this isn't meant to like, uh, you know, boycott Mount Baker Vapor for this silly, irresponsible thing, but I just don't see how Mount Baker Vapor thought that this particular ad in 2018 was a very good idea at all. Back to school sale for vape products. You can, you can get a backpack, you can get a tiny stealthy little me pod, you can get a high nicotine bottle of juice, all back to school, back to school sale. And I do understand that back to school isn't just back to school for kids, it's back to school for of age people, maybe college aged people as well. But the general consensus for back to school is a thing that, that's for kids, right? And again, I'm not trying to drag Mount Baker Vapor's name through the mud. They have been an active member of the community and of the industry for years and years and years now. I just don't know why they would put out this particular advertisement. Then of course, I would love to know what you think. Let me know down in the comments below. Mount Baker Vapor, back to school sale, fine, harmless, no big deal. Or is it just kind of weird that they would do a big back to school sale for vaping products. So I do actually want to talk about California this week. We didn't get to talk about California this week and I really wanna talk about California this week and the MSA and their cashing out of their tobacco bonds. This came from CNBC. I saw this on Twitter and the big headline across the top. California sets a 1.7 billion, billion with a B, billion tobacco bond sale. Now we have talked about the MSA uh, in the past, in the vlogs, and, and I've showed you the truth about vaping video, which really goes into much more detail about California and certain states with the MSA, the Master Settlement Agreement. And I'm gonna link again in the description to that particular video, the truth about vaping, because I think it's a great video. I think Danielle did a great job on that video explaining California and the MSA and the bonds and how they work. And so what's happening now is California is cash out 1.7 billion dollars of tobacco stock. Sorry, not tobacco stock, tobacco bond sale. It's interesting the way that California really likes to sort of uh, puff up its chest a little bit and say, you know, we're, we're, we're leading the fight against big tobacco. We're leading the fight against cigarettes. When in reality, them cashing out this $1.7 billion bond, that's money that is directly affected by the sales of cigarettes in the state. The only way to make these bonds more valuable is if more people are smoking and more cigarette sales happen in the state of California. If more and more people in California stop smoking, maybe by using vapor products, then the value of these bonds will decrease and decrease and decrease. And the only way to get the value of these bonds back up to the point that they can cash them out is with cigarette sales, tobacco tax cigarette sales. So we can kind of see now why California is completely, completely going after vaping, demonizing, vilifying vaping, trying to pass these outrageous taxes, these use bans, these flavor bans. California spent $75 million on the Still Blowing Smoke campaign. Still Blowing Smoke is from the California Department of Public Health, and they spent $75 million combating vaping. More smokers in the state of California means more money from the master settlement agreement. That's that's just how it is. And this is right now, this right here is just for pure entertainment. This is one of the silliest, silliest things that I have ever heard any anybody say ever. This is the California. This is from their own website. This is from tobaccofreecalifornia.com and they're talking about uh, vaping and smoking. And this is one of their arguments against vapor products. I don't know if you're ready for this. It's so silly, it's, it's ridiculous. But 
on their tobacco-free California website, it does say, studies show that using both e-cigarettes and traditional cigarettes during the quitting process is problematic. Though smokers may reduce the number of cigarettes they smoke, they may end up using both products at the same time and never actually quit altogether. This means that any potential health benefits are reduced and the cardiovascular risks associated with smoking stay essentially the same and continue to cause significant health problems for the individual. I find it interesting, A, that they use the term potential health benefits of vaping, right? And this whole paragraph and this whole tobacco-free California thing is kind of their own really ass backward like self-fulfilling prophecy thing. They're saying that vaping doesn't help people quit smoking cigarettes and they're saying that people using e-cigarettes and cigarettes at the same time is, is a negative thing because they're still using cigarettes. But it's the California Department of Public Health themselves that are misinforming people about vaping, about electronic cigarettes. They're out there with, with, with all of this negative attitude, with all of this misinformation, and they're just, they're just misinforming the public, they're demonizing vaping to the public, and then on the same side of the same coin they go well see look vaping vaping doesn't work it's crazy it's crazy to me that in 2018 the california department of public health has launched a bigger assault on vaping than it has with traditional tobacco cigarettes and the only logical reason that i can see for that of why california would do this money it's money it's MSA money. They just cashed out $1.7 billion in tobacco bonds. It sounds <laughs> like some crazy conspiracy theory tinfoil hat stuff, but I assure you, it is not. Of course, I'm gonna put a bunch of links down in the description as to where I'm getting all of my information. I'm gonna do that, I think, with every 510 report, and anything I'm reading, anywhere I get my information, will all be listed down below. I'm not just gonna sit here and make stuff up without having something to back it up with. So I am going to wrap up this 510 report, and I'm gonna leave you with a quote. I'm gonna leave you with a quote here from Marcus Munafo. He is a biological psychologist at Britain's Bristol University, and he said, Should we really be that bothered about addiction in and of itself if it doesn't come with any other substantial harms? It's at least a discussion we need to have. And I think that's just fantastic. If a grown adult person is addicted to something that causes them very, very little harm, maybe something like caffeine, maybe something like nicotine outside of tobacco, and it's not causing them any substantial harm, do we really, really need to be concerned about that particular addiction in and of itself? Like Marcus Munafo said, it's at least a discussion that we should have. So that's gonna wrap up episode two here of the 510 Report. Don't forget, join CASA. It's free and easy. You join, you become a member, and you follow the calls to actions. They have calls to actions. Most literally every time there's a piece of legislation on the books, and it'll be at your home state or your hometown. If you sign up and you're in New Jersey, then you would have known about the 75% tax that they're trying to pass in New Jersey. Jersey. If you signed up for CASA and you live in, uh, you know, uh, Sacramento, you would have known about the flavor ban that's coming to a health committee meeting soon. I believe they changed the date of it. I'm not really sure, but you can know and be active about vaping and vape advocacy as it pertains to your particular state or town. So please, please join CASA. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me once again. And as Kevin Skipper says, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. Let's get involved. Music